Good Friday afternoon. Hello, I wanted to make a quick video where I showcase a discussion topic that has been uh, amazing on Fun Fun Forum. The discussion topic is about teaching programming to children and to teachers that have no prior experience with teaching programming specifically. Fun Fun Forum is a discussion forum that is normally private for uh, patrons of Fun Fun Function, but uh, Recently, uh, me and the moderators have felt that some threads are just amazing. So we are going to make them public and put them in a special spotlight category, which uh, makes them accessible to everyone that uh, watches Fun Fun Function. And um, we also decided that, hey, MPJ should do a video showcasing how great these threads are and how uh, awesome our members are that participate in this, these threads. Topics, they are called topics in this course. Keep saying that uh, in my uh, old forum days, everything was called threads in vBulletin and stuff. Oh, vBulletin. It was such a dreadful piece of software, but it still makes me feel mm, good. Mm, nostalgia. All right, let's uh, jump to the thread here on Fun Fun Forum. Uh, I just want to give you some highlights. Um, I, I've linked the thread in the topic in the episode description. Uh, so Stefan here asked, like, I am no, by no means a rock star or programmer, but I have heard on many occasions that I do have an ability to explain complicated matters in a simple and easy to understand terms. In order to grow as a developer and as a person, I've decided to take some time off in the, uh, uh, the evenings and set up an introductory course to programming with JavaScript. And the school I was talking to was very enthusiastic. Apparently, as of next year, programming will be included in the curriculum for all schools across Sweden. And they offered me the opportunity to introduce it to children and their teachers, which is a very interesting challenge. So this is actually the super interesting. Uh, I've been thinking a lot about this myself, uh, with me being in Sweden, and uh, it's such a big opportunity and such a big impact that it has been decided and mandated that programming should be um, taught in, uh, in schools. But of course this presents a huge challenge in the sense that how do we teach children programming? Traditionally, programming is something that we're used to teaching to adults that know about math and computer science and or, or maybe they don't, but you know, you get the drill. Like how do we teach this to a small child? Uh, and also how can we also fashion this in a system systematic fashion in, in teaching? How do we teach teachers how to teach programming if teachers have no prior experience in programming? There are some really interesting insights in this uh, discussion topic. Uh, Stefan talks about uh, how you approach a complex a problem, teaching a complex problem by breaking it into uh, simpler parts, which is something that I spend a lot of my time doing. Uh, I just take like, oh my god, this very uh, overwhelming complex problem and just what are the essentials of the pro this problem? Can we isolate them and attack them one by one? That is one of the fundamentals of what I do with Fun Fun Function. Eric Nurlan uh, points out that you don't have to be a rock star developer in order to teach others. And I think this, this is extremely important. Uh, it's so easy to think that you must be like very successful or have a very long track record in order to have the authority of teaching programming. Uh, but in my experience, uh, teaching is my primary way of learning because it, it forces me to really, really make sure that I understand the uh, the concept. So it's kind of like teaching is kind of like my litmus test to uh, see if I actually know something. And especially if you do it in a form of YouTube videos, then you better have all the <laughs> specifics correct or people will call you out on it. Eric also points out that uh, it's very important to understand why when you are teaching something. Uh, I spend a lot of time on this and a lot of people, I, I sometimes get shit for it. Um, like people, oh, just get to explaining how it works. But I think it's extremely important to understand why you are learning something in order to be motivated to, to do it. Because learning is hard and you need to have a clear sense of 
why you are spending this time. Otherwise you will get bored or like, yes, oh, why am I doing this? And you will feel like your motivation falling, falling, falling. Pedro Martins, who has been on the FunFun forum since the start, he uh, talks about a quote about Richard F from Richard Feynman uh, that says, if you can't explain a concept to a layman, you don't understand it well enough. Uh, and I think that it's so succinct. Uh, by the way, I just have to give you a tip uh, about, uh, hang on, uh, Rich Feynman uh, man, uh, names. This is completely different. Uh, this is unrelated, but this video uh, from Richard Feynman, uh, like an interview, a little small interview with Richard Feynman, where he talks about how names and, and knowledge are not the same, but people tend to confuse the two. Uh, it's, it's like, it's just two minutes long. You should really check it. It's just so insightful. This, this man, ah, oh, he's amazing. Uh, but that's not what we were talking about. We were talking about teaching programming and uh, Pedro uh, puts it very succinctly. Uh, he says that define what you want to teach, what concepts, understand those concepts to the deepest level, and then understand the why of those concepts. And when you've done that, you should identify the target audience, and then you should identify analogies and common references amongst the target audience. Like, uh, how can you bridge the knowledge gap using knowledge that they know? Like, how, what, what, what are they, their knowledge and how can you build on top of it? And it also makes a point that explaining something that's mainly an, 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 like an empathetic, empathic, empathic, is that how we say it? Empathic job. You need to understand someone uh, and put yourself into the other person's mind and skill and, and then follow from there. And Pedro also said, like, we have such amazing people on the forum. Really, really fine people. Uh, uh, Pedro worked alongside Linda Lucas when uh, at Kodam Academy. I did not know this. Uh, and I, if you don't know who Linda is, uh, she wrote this. Uh, it's Hello Ruby. Uh, but it's Hey Ruby because it's, it's in, in Swedish. Uh, and she, it's a children's book to teach children programming. Uh, and it's, it's so cool. It has uh, like characters, and the snow leopard, and the firefox, uh, and uh, the the penguin, and it, like it's uh, so so nice. I really, really like such a nice approach to uh, uh, teaching programming, and I then I like getting people like children excited and, and introduced to it. And uh, uh, and Code Academy is also like such a great project to bring to the world like it's I, I tend to point people there when uh, people ask how do I get started with programming so it's like ah uh, we have ex ex such nice people uh, Stefan talks about uh, using ingredients uh, like uh, a recipe as an analogy for um, explaining uh, explaining algorithms and then he uh, plays around a little bit but what if we create like you used to do this to create a muffin class with a, co a constructor with some white flour and baking powder and salt properties and then having methods with preheat whoops sorry preheat oven and butter pan and mixing bowl uh, and Valley then points out that that's a good and interesting idea that analogies sounds like a good teaching tool but he points out that Jumping from like a recipe to a written class that it class and functions like it's a very big jump for most be beginners and Vladimir even points out that work introducing uh, object-oriented programming is Probably something that you should stay away completely from when you are introducing a new program because that is that is actually an abstraction on top of programming where we use that to organize code and uh, like compose things together and that makes me think about the fact that object orientation is uh, often we kind of feel like, oh, we're writing object oriented code for the benefit of the computer, but stuff like object orientation is actually for the benefit of the person that is uh, to organize code. Like this is just compiled down to just some bytecode garble or something that the computer interprets. Uh, what the computer, uh, like learning programming is to, learn to think a little bit like a computer. Like how do we explain things to a computer? 
Uh, Object-oriented programming is more like how do we structure code in a way that is uh, maintainable. Now I'm of the opinion that object-oriented code isn't really all that maintainable, but that's a completely different discussion. And then Brian C jumps into the thread and uh, he is a teacher that uh, it, it's evident that he teaches a l programming to uh, people. Like th probably it seems like he's doing it on a full-time basis and he has so many fantastic insights. He talks about how he starts to teach by having people, having the students approach a problem like they would in a natural way and then have them translate that to computer. Uh, he mentioned that analogies and metaphors, they work, but you need to point out the flaws in them because uh, students tend to get very specific, which I, uh, and he says that, oh, he, he mentions that he hated the, uh, uh, the, the, the cooking and recipe example. And I asked him why, and he talked, uh, like elaborated a lot on this, and it was really, the problem with cooking uh, example, cooking and recipes, uh, are that they are very ambiguous. Like a computer would not be able to follow these recipes and even humans make a lot of mistakes. For examples, there are uh, many recipes I use that, that say put your uh, sto stove on high heat or medium heat. That is not very specific. Or for example, stir until smooth. What is smooth? So cooking, uh, cooking and recipes might actually be more useful as an example of, of a bad way of implementing an algorithm. Uh, it's, a recipe is exactly the kind of thinking that you want to move the student away from. Brian even talks about how he uh, uses a similar example, an exercise, uh, that he describes in detail with balloons and stuff and students standing back to back having to explain things to each other uh, in order to explain why you can't talk to a computer in natural language, why we have programming languages. Uh, and this is something I find myself uh, explaining to people a lot that uh, people think that we have programming languages uh, to uh, like just for the benefit of the computer, but we have programming languages because it is a tool to ex uh, express things extremely specifically. And that is why we don't have uh, visual programming languages or uh, if that we don't have programming languages like that you can write in English because those languages are not specific enough. If you are interested in teaching programming, uh, you should really check this thread out and here's uh, instructions for the, uh, for the exercise. It's bang on, so cool. Anyway, this topic is uh, open to the public. Uh, you can uh, check it out, read it. If you want to join the FunFun Fun Forum and have access to all the other threads and stuff, uh, you can just become a patron of FunFun Fun Function. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's available to all patrons, even if you just pledge $1, uh, which is actually half of what I paid for this pack of gum. So if you're interested in having interesting conversations with me and other programmers, then consider becoming a patron and joining Fun Fun Forum. It's, it's also a really great way of supporting the production of this show because this is my full-time job now. And that is it. I hope you have a great weekend. I am MPJ. Until Monday morning, stay curious.